let's solve another problem from chapter two in the programming project. This is problem nine. And I've copied the problem statement here into the comments. So let's just write a program that reads in 10 whole numbers and that outputs the sum of all the numbers greater than zero. The sum of all the numbers less than zero, which will be negative, a negative number or zero, and the sum of all the numbers, whether positive, negative, or zero. The user enters the 10 numbers just once each, and the user can enter, enter them in any order. Your program should not ask the user to enter the positive numbers and the negative numbers separately. In other words, we want them to just prompt them to enter 10 different numbers, or 10 numbers, right? And they can do it in any order. All right, so we did a quick read through of this problem statement. All right, let's start breaking it down into the various sub problems that we have to solve. Right. So what is it asking for in terms of output? All right, the sum of all numbers greater than zero. I guess I'm gonna break things down in terms of what is our output, all right? Sum of all positive numbers sum of all negative numbers, and then it wants the sum of all numbers, both the positive and the negative. And on the input side, right, input, user inputs 10, and it said whole numbers, so that's going to tell me that they want integer values. So let's just, uh, Create something called number, right? And we want the user to input 10 numbers. Now, we could create 10 different variables and read in the 10 different numbers, but all we really need to do is read the numbers one at a time, right? And we can use a loop to do that, right? We can prompt the user to enter a number. We can test to see whether it's positive or negative and add it to the sum, right? And then prompt them to enter another number. So let's just go ahead and work on getting the user to enter 10 numbers. All right, we're going to write a loop. And so in the loop, let's say something like while count is less than or equal to 10. Now, what is count? I've not defined count yet, but we're going to use count as the control structure or the control variable that controls how often this loop condition is true. So let's go ahead and create count. It's gonna be an int. Whenever we count the number of times loops execute, we always use something, some value from the integer family. All right, so what if I set count equal to one? All right, and in this case, I'm going to just set my test condition to three. Eventually we do want this to be 10 whole numbers, but sometimes when I'm testing, and I'm having to type things in, I don't want to type 10 numbers every time I test this. So I've just decided to set it to three, and let's prompt the user to enter a value. So C out, enter an integer value. And we're gonna read that and store that in number. All right. So that would cause this to execute, right? First time count set equal to one. Our control flow count less than or equal to three is true. We're gonna print out this message. And if I don't remember to do something to increment count, then I'll have an infinite loop. Right. So here's a sub problem of just getting the user to enter numbers repeatedly. In this case, like I said, made this three so let's go ahead and uh, build this All right no warnings no errors that's good and let's say let's start without debugging All right let's run this and i can enter any old integer value six minus 19 zero All right all we did with that is we just wanted to confirm that this would run three times like we expected so we've got that part of the problem tapped like we can control how many times the user inputs a value. Right. 
Now let's look at our output. We're supposed to be outputting the sum of all positive numbers, negative numbers, and the sum of all numbers. That means in here we need to accumulate the sum. And we're going to be summing integers. Let's store that in an int. Uh, we're going to have, so we're just going to assume that an int will be a large enough data type for the sum. So I'm going to say sum neg, sum pause. Oh, sorry. I'm going to initialize this to zero. Some pause, I'm going to initialize to zero as well, too. All right, whenever we sum numbers, right, when we create the variable, the sum variable, we always initialize it to zero. Later, when we add something to it, math identity, anything added to zero gives you that same number back, right? So x plus zero is always x. So now in here, we've read in the user's number. Let's just say if number, it doesn't matter whether we test for positive or negative first, but I'm going to say if number is less than zero, right, it must be a negative number. So sum neg is equal to sum neg plus number. All right, so we're summing the negative numbers. Else sum pause equals sum pause plus number. If it wasn't negative, well, it could either be positive or zero. If it's zero, and we're just simply adding zero to the sum, it won't change the sum. All right, so we don't have to have a separate condition to test for zero and just add up the number of zeros, right? Because all we need to keep track of is the sum of negatives and the sum of positives. That should then give us our sums. For our output then, right, when our loop is finished executing, that means we will have all of our sums. We can write that out. I'm going to maybe give it a couple of new line characters. So now I'm taking my comments, basically turning them into code. Some pause. Just going to write them on their own line. I, the form of our output wasn't specified. This is really just an exercise in terms of completing the logic. We can always pretty things up later if we need to. All right, so there's our sum of negative numbers. Our sum of all numbers, right? Let's see that. Sum of all numbers. Oh, that's just the sum of the negative and the sum of the positive. And here, I want to see how things line up. Okay, that was good. So there's my two new line characters at the beginning. All right, let's go ahead and build this. And let's start it running. Sorry, I popped up on another screen. All right, so I'm going to do a really simple case here. I'm going to say minus one, zero, and the number two. All right, so I entered one negative number, one zero, and one positive number, all right? So we would expect the sum of all positive numbers to be two, that's our only positive number. And we said it's okay if it added zero, so we had a zero, two plus zero, so it gives us two for positive numbers. We only entered one negative number, so the sum of our negative number should be minus one. And if we add two plus minus one, the sum of all numbers is one. So that was just a good, quick, easy check of our logic. And now if we wanted to go ahead and change this to 10 from three, now that we've tested with an easier case, all right, let's test with a case that we were asked to develop, all right? Made a change, so I need to rebuild. And let's start this running, all right? And we could start entering all 10 numbers here. Uh, 10, 9, minus 3, minus 5, 0, 19, right, minus 15, 7, 443, minus 22, and let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. 
Here's the sum of all positive numbers. Well, I should probably really check. 443 plus 7 is 450. 469 plus 0, 479, 488. All right, 488 is correct. There's minus 8, minus 23, minus 45. Right? All right. And those gave us the correct sum for our number. All right. So what we did was we broke the problem down. All right. We started with a simple task of trying to enter, just seeing if we could enter, creating that loop to enter 10 numbers, or we use three for the simpler case. When we saw we had that part of the problem solved, we went ahead and added the logic to check to see whether the number was positive or negative. Based on that test condition, then we added to the appropriate sum. Important concept, right? Whenever we create a sum variable, we need to initialize it to zero because we write this in the form of the new sum is equal to the old sum plus the current number. And we write that back in memory. So we need to initialize that to zero so it doesn't have garbage in the memory. And like I said, the first time we performed this addition with zero in there, well, our first sum will just be that first number. And then we output all of the values. All right. So that's it to solve this problem.